Welcome back to episode 5 of the cut. Get a 200 pounds shreddy. Gonna show you guys a little grocery haul here. This is why I eat most days with some small exceptions. Occasionally, I throw a little bit of carbs with fruit or honey, but I rarely, rarely do that unless I really feel like I need it. First up, we got, I've never tried this before. It's like a massive roasting joint. The price point is pretty decent compared to like buying steaks by themselves. So I just got a big lump. Of me. I don't know how I'm going to cook it yet, we'll decide that later. This will last me, well the mince and the meat will last me around a week and then the eggs will last me a bit longer than that. When I go I just buy like a whole box because why not? I eat that many, it gets kind of annoying always going back and, back and forth to get tons and tons of eggs. Always go with, when it comes to the mince, always go with a 20% fat version, especially for me because I eat lower carbs are far higher fat so if you cut out a lot of carbs yet you do not increase your fat intake you're going to have issues there because it needs to be there to replace the carbs that you would usually have not only that it's cheaper and it tastes better so that's kind of a no-brainer there we have some semi-skimmed organic milk usually i get whole milk however there's no organic whole milk so i've got a semi-skimmed version instead i'm gonna go for meal one after this, I'm not sure what I'm going to have. I'll whip something up there, I'll show you guys. And we're going to hit arms today. We're going to be hitting cheeky arm sesh as usual. We're going to be going later in the evening because on the weekends and Friday, everyone's always out doing stuff. So when you go to the gym before it closes, completely empty. I've got one goose egg left, and we're going to be trying out boil it. So I've done the fried egg. To be honest, it was okay. Wasn't a big fan. Taste super, super gamey. And we're going to try doing like the boiled egg version this time, see what it does taste like. I'm also going to have 10 regular boiled eggs because I am completely starving. So we're going to cook this up. I'm going to do the goose egg first, of course, since it's absolutely humongous. We've got the 10 boiled eggs here. The goose egg sadly exploded and did not exactly work out the way I planned it. Gonna tuck into these 10 right here. I did actually try the goose egg after it exploded. It tasted okay. I'd actually say, to be honest, the boiled version tastes better than the fried egg version. So if you're trying the goose egg, I would recommend boiling it. However, do not do what I do and like make the whole thing explode. Then it just ends up in like a bit of a weird shape. But gonna get this down me, arm workout later. We are off to the gym. Now, I scrammed those eggs, then after, I had a, the hankering for a bit of milk. So, like, before before I knew what was happening, the, the milk, the milk jug, the milk carton just managed to appear in my hands. Before I knew it, litre of milk, 1.1 litres of milk, it's like down the gullet. And, yeah, so not really hungry, do not really want to consume any more food or any sorts of liquid. You never know. Maybe I'll get back, might have a little protein shake. The current form exercise that I do, I've talked about this on my Instagram, if you wanna check it out, but it's like a cable flexion for the wrist. So good, complete game changer for growing my forearms. So be tuned out for that in the coming few minutes. But yeah, I think I'll go in depth into that exercise a little bit more. But yeah. Niha guys, we got the arm workout voice over here. My mate James is filming me, so let me know, do you prefer the fixed camera on the tripod or do you like someone filming my set? Because my mate James, he thinks he's like proper sick with the camera, so like be brutally honest in the comments. <laughs> anyway, we're starting off with some single arm tricep pushdowns with our elbow pushed slightly back. Having the elbow pushed slightly back makes it feel really, really nice. Not only, you kind of have to use a little bit less weight, you cannot go super, super heavy if you do it like a regular way, but you also get a little bit more long head as well. So if you're someone, you want to have a bit more long head on the push downs, do that. But there again, if you're only looking to hit the short head on your push downs, then you don't have to like put your elbow back at all or anything. You can just do it in front of you. No issues there. As always, when it comes to smaller exercises like arm training, tricep extensions, bicep curls, everything must be taken to complete failure. You are pretty much just wasting your time if you're not even taking your arm training to failure. There's no reason not to. Next up, we're doing some standing 
bicep curls my form injury is getting way better so i think i'm currently at the point where i can pretty much almost train my biceps as hard as i want within reason i'd say i'm about 80 to 90 percent there really so i'm able to start making progress and grow my biceps make them bigger so that'll help us and that'll aid us in our journey to 18 inch arms which will be absolutely crazy hopefully we can get there before i reach 20. next exercise and this is another super set guys we're doing the hammer curls that we actually have our arm fixed on the preacher curl this feels really nice and it stops any form of swinging whatsoever and you can also see i'm slightly leaned back so it's almost mimicking a little bit of an incline as well so you guys can give this a shot first two sets i done 16 kilos and then once my form felt warmed up i went up to 18 kilos and there was very little pain there which is really really good as i said we are supersetting these i always say this but you must be supersetting your arms if you're not supersetting your arms it is a complete waste of time like you can just save so much more time and you can even do more volume more stuff in the gym because it does not take as long i've never met anyone unable to superset arms due to cardiovascular reasons because that's an excuse people will give against supersets if you're unable to superset the arms because of your cardio there are bigger issues than getting bigger arms and i think you need to worry about that instead but for every other person start supersetting your stuff guys not only because you get to a point in the workout where you kind of dip once you've been there for a certain amount of time and that no matter what you do you don't feel like you're making as much progress you're kind of going through the motions more even if you are going to failure so by supersetting you're spending less time and i find you do not get that mid session dip as much because you're getting your workouts done a lot faster next up we're on to forearms and as i said i'll elaborate on this a little bit more the reason doing the forearm flexion on the cable is so effective is because you're in a pronated position usually when you do a forearm flexion it's with like a dumbbell on your leg the reason that is bad is because it puts your wrist in an unnatural position even if you go do that motion right now your wrist wants to move inward it does not move in that natural position so once you start doing that you can start getting wrist pain however if you're in a pronated position like i am here it feels way better way more natural and as a result you can actually push harder on this exercise this has been the sole reason i've been able to actually grow my forearm flexor a lot more next exercise and this is supersetted of course we're doing the wrist extension if you're looking to get your forearms super jacked 80 percent i'd argue maybe 90 percent of the size gains can be made through flexion and extension if you're looking for that extra 10 percent, there are lots of other movements you can add in and different other functions of the forearm now physique update this is what we are currently looking like guys i think the physique is coming along very nicely still making progress in the gym regardless of being in a calorie deficit you can see the arms are definitely a strong point it's quite funny as when i talk to people now they always say that my arms are my strongest muscle group and they'll say that oh your arms are genetically blessed and i've heard this like many many times but the thing is before this when my arms weren't as big when i didn't prioritize them people would say that my arms were not genetically blessed and that my chest was genetically blessed but i never hear that anymore so guys you have to understand once you get big once you make progress people are going to say that you have really good genetics but before that people won't say anything they won't even say you have good genetics they might even say you have bad genetics so the whole concept just doesn't really make sense because once you get big you have good genetics and when you're not big you have bad genetics which is just so dumb instead of worrying about genetics guys just focus on what you've been given do the best with what you have and trust me guys, if you put in the work, you will make a ton of progress. Ni hao guys, in the last video, I mentioned about how I am controlling my hunger and controlling my carbs so I'm not hungry all the time. And I've been doing this for a very long time. So I no longer ever deal with feeling hungry and like wanting to go over the calories or going over what I should eat. In it's more like, which is kind of crazy, because before I was always the person who struggled to not eat as much. But now, it's kind of like the opposite, where it's i'm more along the lines of it's harder to eat more food now than it is to eat less if that makes sense which is kind of crazy from someone who used to just be like perpetually hungry so i'm gonna dive into this a little bit more first off if you are someone who thinks you need a lot of help with this 
fill out my form in the description and we can have a talk and chat about this and I can help you personally with this issue. However, I'll just like briefly go over it. Essentially, the reason is that the carbs will make you super, super hungry. And this is what I have found. I found this with a lot of people as well. So this isn't even talking about like health and like elimination diet because I've like done elimination diet and you can like figure out what types of foods agree with you. And there are carbohydrate sources which feel completely fine with me. However, that does not take into account like how hungry I am feeling. And often when I would eat certain carbohydrates, certain foods, it would spike my hunger, make, my hu make me super, super hungry. And that is like really, really annoying when you know it's more of a craving instead of like actual hunger. So what are you doing this is now? What I done, first off, carnivore diet. And I know some people would dislike this diet, especially online, because now instead of like seeing vegans, you'll see like carnivore people, which is kind of funny. I guess it's like the other side of the spectrum. However, it does, and after personal experience, it is actually a very good diet. In my opinion, it's worked very, very well for me. So I'm mostly carnivore, and sometimes I'll have certain carbohydrates. But at first, when you're trying to control the hunger, if you eliminate all the carbs and just go pure carnivore, immediately you'll notice that your hunger is so much less than it was. And that makes it very, very easy to stick to a certain amount of calories, a certain amount of food, and not add on a ton of weight. What you will notice with this is you will get sugar cravings cravings for carbohydrates so there is like a certain time period where you kind of have to get over this once you get used to that and you no longer have issues of feeling hungry all the time you can then slowly start to introduce certain carbohydrates gradually seeing how it affects you and then you can kind of get to a point where you can eat carbs normally and not get super hungry so that's just like a very brief explanation Hopefully I've explained it in a way where it kind of makes sense. I didn't go in too much to it. But essentially it's pretty much carnivore. Then once your body is like normal and not addicted to carbs, you can then slowly introduce them again. And then you have no issues. Or for me personally, I just feel that good just having less carbs that I very rarely eat them. And I only occasionally have fruit and honey. But I don't even have that often anymore. To be honest, thank you for watching the video, guys. If you are struggling with diet, losing weight, or we want to build muscle, fill out the form in the description. We can have a chat. Anyway, until episode six, I'll see you later.